Hello Sharks, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com, here today with a hand from Poker After Dark. They are playing 50 $100 blinds, high stakes cash game for you. Make sure you check it out on Poker Go. Today we have a hand featuring two battlers. We have Jake Daniels, generally loose, splashy, aggressive. He limps from the small blind. And Sam Sorverl, world-class player, absolute crusher. He opts to check the big blind with the King Jack offsuit. I think raising is perfectly fine. He probably didn't want to raise and get re-raised because Jake is aggressive and he will randomly blast you. So whatever, he checks it back. I'm a-okay with this. Although I think raising is probably the default. Flop comes king, king, 10. This is good for Sam. He has basically the nuts. Two diamonds available. Jake bets 100. This is an interesting spot where I think against most people, you probably just want to raise immediately to try to get a lot of money in against draws, worst kings, 10s, etc. The problem, though, is that we have this pesky jack of diamonds in our hand that really blocks the draws, right? It's now very difficult for Jake to have a straight draw or a flush draw. And for that reason, I guess calling's fine. And also, you really, really, really want to keep Jake in the pot. Man, the downside here is that he bet 100 into 300. And if you raise the turn, that's just going to look super strong, too. So this is a tough one, but I, I think the play is probably just to raise and hope he has something. But I can get behind calling as well. Sam does go for a small raise. And I like a small raise. You want to make sure you're not blasting it too big here. Because if you do raise, let's say, 500, which is just a pot size raise, um, you will then perhaps start getting folds from hands like weird pocket fours, ace high, right? And I think when you go 300, you will get called by those some portion of the time. So I guess this is fine. Also, it's, it's really clear Sam wants to build the pot, right? Like he's trying to get money in the pot. Jake opts to call. Turn is the 10. And Jake checks. Here we are. We have the King Jack on King King 10 10. What do you do in Sam's shoes? I want you to pause the video and write what you would do in this situation in the comments section. Would you check it back and get really tricky? Would you bet tiny, like 200? Would you bet medium, like 500? Or would you bet big, like 900? Pause the video and write what you would do in the comment section below. All right, here we have the full house. I think you just want to bet. You want to make the pot big. If you let it go check, check, yeah, you may induce some bluffs from like random low flush draws like 8-7 of diamonds or random queen nine on the river, but I think in this spot, you just want to get full value when you're against a 10, because a 10 is just not folding. So I definitely love the idea of betting, and I think you want to go medium to big. For all we know, Jake may still call with a hand like queen nine if he feels inclined, if he thinks you're bluffing a lot, which, you know, Sam is known to get out of line every once in a while. So I think you want to bet on the bigger side. But then Sam checks. Excuse me, excuse me. Do you not want to play a big pot with your hand, sir? I get the idea that if you bet, Jake will probably just fold out a lot of draws here because the draws are drawing thin or dead. But, I mean, we're playing a blind versus blind pot. Ranges are kind of wide. Remember, it was a limped pot as well. Limp, check, preflop. So Sam's range is pretty wide open and often does not contain the big cards. So this is a spot where I think you just want to put money in. I'm kind of surprised he didn't put money in. River's a 10. Jake now bets $4,000 into the 900 pot. What is happening here? Well, if I was in Sam's shoes, I would just call. Why would I call? I would call because I know Jake likes to get in there and battle. Also, remember how this hand is played out, right? Sam's hand does not look like a king whatsoever. Let's go back and replay this hand here. The Sam hands look like a king at all. So remember, limp, check, pre preflop. So you can already discount stuff like King Jack. Flop comes, bet minimum, and a small raise. While this could be kings, you know, Maybe is, maybe isn't. Turn, check, check, though. I don't think there's a lot of kings here. Clearly there is. Clearly I'm wrong. Sam would have tricked me. And then on the river, Jake's like, well, I'm probably chopping. Because you, you chop with everything besides a king or pocket aces, queens, and jacks, right? Or a ten, of course. Um, so I think it's just an easy call. Sam may say, well, do I really want to put in $4,000 to try to get back 450 on average, when we are chopping. But I don't think you're always chopping in this spot, right? I think that's a key 
thing to consider. It's very different whenever you, you're calling for only a chop. I think in this scenario, when Jake is blasting it, while he may blast it with some kings, I think he'll also blast it with some just total air balls. And you beat the air balls in this scenario. So I think it's just a pretty easy call. Sam makes the easy call. Oh no, Sam makes the fold. Sam decided to fold the kings, the three kings and the two tens. And Jake had the ace high bluffed. That's embarrassing. Savage, savage. Savage bluff by Jake, and he gets Sam, the super crusher, to make a big hero fold. It's wonderful. <laughs> Poker is a wonderful game. Let's go back and listen to the commentary that I gave on this hand whenever I watched it back in the Poker Go studio. Before the break, Jake Daniels bullied Sam Sovereil off the second nuts, and for more on that hand, let's send it to Jonathan Little. Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan Little of PokerCoaching.com and let's analyze this interesting spot. Whenever the pot is very likely to be split, a strong play is to bet large, especially if you could have one of the effective nut hands. Jake correctly realized that he could easily have a king or a 10 in this scenario and made a gigantic four times the pot river bluff. While most of your opponents will call when they have a king or a full house better than the board, many players will fold out a chop awarding you all of the pot instead of only half of it. And sometimes your opponents will make a read like Sam did in this scenario, which resulted in Sam getting none of the pot instead of all of it. How would you like to play with me on Poker After Dark? Well, now is your chance. I'm giving away one $5,000 buy-in seat to play with me next season. Head over to pokercoaching.com slash pokerafterdark to enter the giveaway. All right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this wild hand. Would you have folded the three kings on the river ever? Do you ever, ever actually fold the three kings? Thinking about it more, it's like, if you think Jake's literally never doing this with a bluff, then you should fold, right? Because either you're chopping and you get 450 bucks back, or you lose 4,000. But it's important to realize your reads are not always going to be spot on. Sometimes you're wrong. Sometimes you're right, though. Have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. I'm going to give all of you a tip. If you make a pretty good full house, you probably shouldn't fold it. Bye-bye. Hello. Do I have your attention? Good. You know I love to give away lots of free strategy advice here on my YouTube channel. So do me a quick favor. Can you click the subscribe button right here and right down here below? Thank you. See you in the next video.